testet alle de ting, som vores detektor skulle kunne, for eksempel sende et signal til kontrolrummet. Det var bare et vældig sætte kilometer. Det er nærkatil og grønne makiler. Det er jo helt ulykkeligt, og det er ikke prøvet. Og det er ikke prøvet. 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 The CERN has grown up sort of incrementally over the last 50 years, 60 years. I do remember the first time I came here, you have this vision that, that CERN, you know, because people talk about it when you're, when you're not in particle physics, you know, you hear about it uh, like in your undergraduate and stuff and it's described as this high-tech center of some of the most advanced uh, scientific research that's going on in the world and it's you know it's the largest it's the largest single scientific lab in the world as well so uh, based on those two facts i i sort of built up this image that it was going to be you know modern and, and and futuristic and then when i arrived for the first time on a rainy sunday afternoon a lot like today and started walking past all these these rusty square buildings that were made out of you know sheet metal in the 1950s which if you're anticipating that you're visiting yeah the, uh, one of the the most advanced scientific research labs in the world possibly isn't quite as impressive as you might expect <laughs> Basically what they're trying to do here today is recreate the situation in the universe just moments after the Big Bang that created all creation everything around us. They're doing that using a super collider that will send super accelerated particles. There's experimentalists, there's theorists, there's, there's engineers, and technicians. And then there's the, there's the whole support structure that goes with that. We have lots of admin, HR. It's like a town on its own, it's a... I think for, for a lot of us, it becomes quite ordinary. You get used to working on the LHC and it loses the excitement to some extent inevitably after a while. So it, it is quite exciting when, when like, you know, it, it brings it back to you when all these people from outside come in and for them it's new and they say, and they say, you know, this is actually really interesting. That makes, that's quite, that's quite rewarding. And that makes it, it sort of, it brings back the fact that actually what we're doing here is, is unusual and it's quite exciting. How serious is this project being taken? Well, there has been more than three billion euros of investment, more than 7,000 of the world's top scientists devoting their time and energy to this project. Indeed, the people here are saying it is the biggest advent in world science since the space program. Atlas and the LHC as a project as a whole has been going on for 20 years or so. So, and this only happens once. It'll, you know, it'll live for another 20 years at least the LHC so so to be here at this critical point where we turn from being you know a project in planning to a project in action is 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 lucky for me given that I've only been involved with it for a couple of years these scientists behind me here at this control room is the control room of Atlas which is the biggest of the four detectors the detectors are like giant microscopes if you like who will magnify the uh, collisions that will take place here what we're waiting for here is for the revolution to happen in the opposite direction we've already had the beams being transmitted clockwise they want to make sure it works the other way because of course you need the beams to be going in both directions to be able to bring the particles together head on in that big collision which they hope will replicate the uh, moments just after the Big Bang. We were in what's called the, I think it's called, uh, the Data Quality Monitoring Satellite Control Room. What we would be doing normally is 
is just is making pictures of these events and passing them on to experts from other parts of the detector to see whether they're happy and whether if you know if we notice problems passing them on so that they can analyze them in more detail but on Wednesday we were we were helping out more with the publicity aspect of things trying to make sure that that all these all these media people who were here to watch the start of the LHC had something nice to include in their in their news bulletin. How long have we got? What is the time scale? How much do we need to panic? Half an hour, maybe? Half an hour, yeah. right. Let's panic a fairly large amount. That's a proper challenge. I found physics really boring at GCSE and A-level and quite boring at degree level as well, to be perfectly honest. I used, to, I used to find some of the ideas quite interesting, if not like the stuff that I was being taught. Um, Alan, do you just want to look at this because they're all greater than one? That's what you are like. I mean, they're all one or greater, or do you actually need the Instagram? Um, it's a different experience going from going from being taught things and working through things, you know, answering questions, solving problems, and listening to people tell you things. Is and it can be interesting, and you need to do it, but. <laughs> it's a different and much more rewarding experience when somebody says to you, go away and think about this. And it's not because they know the answer and they want to see whether you can come up with it or not. It's because they don't know and they want to see, they want you to go away and produce something really original. Oh, copy. So is there this time been information? Yes, only for the, only for the, uh, the RDO SI clusters, oh, okay. not for the... Um, I'm going to grab my laptop so I can make this plot yep, and sure. I'll, I'll be downstairs, but just email it to me. Yep, sure, yeah, yeah, I can email you numbers. numbers. You just to feel like you are at the, like, the forefront of something, that actually, you know, you're the first person to think about this. When you, when, like, I think this is probably true in any field, actually, but this is what I felt in particle physics. When I finished, when I finished, like, learning things and started doing research, it's like you've gradually worked your way up and it keeps getting more interesting and then eventually you're at the end. There's, there isn't anything else for people to teach you because you've reached some point in your very specific area where, where actually you know more than anyone else. And that's, that's kind of surprising. It's not obvious that you're going to feel, it's kind of a surprising feeling to feel like, actually, now, now I'm the expert in this. You know, I, I don't have to ask anyone else what to do anymore or what the answer is because nobody else knows. I've got to work it out for myself or I'm never going to find out, you know. That is, that's a rewarding feeling when, when you're really, you're just doing it for yourself. Congratulations. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> <buddy. laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Just fantastic. <laughs>